The Great Pyramids of Giza Undoubtedly some of the most incredible ancient monuments to be found anywhere on Earth. Just how old are these structures? 4,000 years? 10,000 years? 100,000 years? We recently uncovered the astonishing megalithic blocks once exposed upon the east side of Cheops. Blocks which indicate that the entire skeletal structure of the pyramid is actually made with blocks similar to those found at Baalbek. 100 plus ton blocks, revealed at some point within antiquity, most likely done by a jealous ruler in an attempt to destroy and conceal the evidence of this past, more capable civilizations were. Additionally, humans are curious creatures. Not only do we now suspect that destructive phases have befallen the great structure throughout its long life on Earth, but also, like we do today, has also before experienced being marveled at, and conservation efforts in the form of more modern casting stones have been installed. These blocks, initially obstructing our view of the seemingly impossible blocks which make up its inner structure. Is there any proof to support such claims of an enormous age to be found anywhere else on Earth? Peru, a place which contains the same uncannily designed impossible pre-Incan architecture. Within the Supi Valley, some 120 miles north of Lima, is the Pyramid of Caral. Now claimed to be the oldest pyramid on Earth, and the clear erosion which it has experienced clearly makes it an obvious candidate for this title of incredible antiquity, once towering into the heavens, now virtually leveled by erosion over many, many millennia. This site has clearly received no later attention by a capable or interested civilization, left to rot with the overgrown mountains of Peru. Yet it possesses such similarities in architecture with ancient Mesopotamia, China, India, and indeed Egypt, is it now so unforgivable to suspect that all of these structures were actually built by the same civilization, at the same time within history? The only difference being that the well-known and documented Egyptian civilization later moved in on the specific pyramidal structures of Giza for power purposes while the Inca focused in on the ancient architectural land terracing. Interestingly, and yet more compelling, evidence supports previous hypotheses here on the channel. When Paul Kosak discovered Corral in 1948, it received little attention because it appeared to lack any historical artifacts, an unusual absence of any habitational evidence usually sought at archaeological sites. Could this be due to the sheer age of these monuments? That all but the remaining gigantic stones has simply eroded away? Corral is not the only pyramid to be found within Peru. There are many more which share the same evidence of great age. Near the city of Saipan is the largest pyramid concentration in Southern America, known as the Pyramids of Tucumi, or the Valley of the Pyramids. It has no less than three pyramid cities, which together have a stunning total of 250 pyramids. Tucumi lies on the southern margin of the valley and is surrounded by fertile agricultural land, thanks to the Tami Canal, which brings water northwards from the Chanque River, a perfect strategic location for a once flourishing civilization. Who were these people? When did they live? Thanks to ongoing research, not only is the officially upheld story surrounding such cities crumbling, but we are now getting closer and closer to finally answering these questions. The chronological dating of our technological development and capabilities within antiquity are often correlated and judged upon the developments within heat management of metal refinery. For example, one of our strongest arguments against the modern-day attested view that ancient Egyptians were the builders of the Sphinx, the pyramids, the tombs, etc., is partly based upon their lack of ability in heating a furnace to a sufficient enough temperature 
to create the hardened metal tools needed to penetrate and carve such hard stones. The Nanjing Belt is an extremely rare find that has unsurprisingly vanished from public view, preventing any further analysis, although the existence of these artifacts was officially noted in several places and was indeed analyzed by several specialists. What is amazing regarding the Nanjing Belt is its age, but most importantly, what it is made of. In 1952, two tombs were found within Yixing City in China. One of the tombs also had a clear date inscribed upon its inside. It stated that they were buried on the 20th of September of the seventh year of Yuan Kang, the late general of Zhao, 1700 years ago. When the belt was initially retrieved, it was sent for analysis at the chemistry department of Nanjing University. The results were astonishing. 10% copper, 5% manganese, and the remaining was 85% pure aluminum. However, the development of aluminum is a very modern achievement, requiring extreme heats to smelt, heats that we believe were impossible to manage at the time. Alumina is dissolved in molten cryolite at 1000 degrees C, with a melting point of pure alumina being 2054 degrees Celsius. So, the question persists, how could such an artifact exist? A question once taken up in the West by three scholars, Butler, Glidewell, and Pritchard at St. Andrews University. Titled Aluminum Objects from a Jing Dynasty Tomb, Can They Be Authentic? Interdisciplinary Science Reviews, 1986, Volumes 89-94. to The abstract sums up their work, quote, Pieces of aluminum, supposedly parts of a set of belt ornaments, were found in a Jing Dynasty tomb during excavations in the 1950s. The authenticity of these finds was questioned at the time in view of the technology required to isolate aluminum from its ore. Examination of the thermodynamic requirement for this process demonstrates unequivocally that the temperature required for this process is greatly in excess of that possible with Jing Dynasty technology, and so the finds cannot be authentic. Unfortunately, again, we find ourselves in familiar waters. So-called scholars, three in fact, with a conclusion based solely upon historical assumptions. Unfortunately, the artifact was seemingly too controversial for some, and it has disappeared, sadly, quite possibly forever. Upon the shores of Lake Taupo within New Zealand is an intriguing, as yet unexplained artifact that has become known as the Kaimanawa Wall. What is interesting regarding the Kaimanawa Wall is the fact that it clearly predates academia's rigidly attested view of the past inhabitations of the country. New Zealand is largely accepted to have first been inhabited within the last 800 years. However, the analysis that has been done on this mysterious wall has shown that it is, at very minimum, 2,000 years old. Additionally, it clearly displays the telltale construction qualities of a lost knowledge, evidently within countless other ruins found all over the world. The controversial wall first came to public attention during the early 1990s, with a publication by Barry Brailfords in the New Zealand Listener called Megalith Mystery Are Giant Stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park, Evidence of an Ancient New Zealand Culture? Within, he details how analysis has shown that the stone wall is at least two millennia old and was created by previous unknown settlers within New Zealand. He called them the Waitaha and postulated that they were subsequently exterminated by the Maoris who arrived only 800 years ago. Furthermore, Brailsford maintains that the wall could link New Zealand with Egypt, South America, and many other ancient civilizations continuing to list 12 pieces of evidence to support his claims. Predictably, however, individuals within many different fields of academia have leapt to the defense of currently upheld paradigms. The Department of Conservation, archaeologists, geologists, and just about every political party in New Zealand, including a number of media outlets, directed tremendous hostility toward the claims, leading to the site being completely shut off to the public. You have to wonder, what are they so scared of people finding? Regardless of Brailford's evidence, 
a conclusion that the wall is nothing but a mere natural formation, has been publicly peddled ever since the publication nearly 30 years ago. A conclusion in staunch denial of reality or evidence. The conclusion made by official geologists was that the wall is an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claimed that the block shapes were produced by fractures in the rock, attributed to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural events. It seems scholars are quite happy to date such sites, but extremely reluctant to attribute any intelligent design within their creation. Could the Kaimanawa Wall really be a 330,000-year-old man-made wall? A wall built by the same people as many other sites found across the world? We find such possibilities highly compelling.